Welcome to the Blueprint Podcast, where the blueprint to understanding a new and unified world is in our shifting consciousness. Hey, everyone. Thank you for joining us here on the Blueprint. I'm Angela, and I have Renee with me again today. Thanks, Renee, for joining. How are you? You. I'm good. How are you? I am good. Yay. Getting colder here in the north, but it's expected, I guess. It was 22 this morning. Oh, yeah. yeah. Too much. Yeah. Too much too soon. Yeah, for sure. Okay. So this whole idea of compartmentalization has been just roaming around in my consciousness for probably the last <laughs> week. So we're going to dive into it. And it's all right. about um, meaning and putting meaning to everything in the world. And particularly, um, we want to dive into the I am because um, I was taught early on in my spiritual growth um, you know, that the I am that I am was very much a power tool um, that we could use. But today, that's it. I think there's a change in the consciousness about that. So, so this week, it was very clear to me, you know, that in the Western world, we compartmentalize every single thing, like everything. It's like we're the keepers of duality. Have you ever noticed that? Yes. <laughs> right? It was like, what? Oh, we are the keepers. Oh, we're the we're the we're the holders. Okay, let's break that down. <laughs> so we separate our um ourselves through this whole idea of individuation, but also through the idea of oneness. So I did some research on the whole concepts and ideas of oneness teachings and most of the information teaches literal separation so what i found was everything from belief in the one god which you are not right like you're separate from the one god to the trinity having three separate beings of which you are again not a part of um and then we all have the systems of government we have systems of schools, we have healthcare systems, all competing for your attention, and all of which seem to be com this competitive kind of energy, which keeps you in separation. So we have all these supporting systems of separation. The whole I am mentality is a support of separation. So let's dive into that a little bit further. Even in the spiritual communities, the I am that I am has been taught for us to use in a way to assert existence, meaning that you have to have something, right? That you have to create some type of existence in order to exist. <laughs> Again, separating yourself from something. Even though it can be a distorted path of self-realization and self or personal power, I want to say it can be a, a tool that we use for that route, but it still supports separation. So no, no matter the path, I mean, let's, let's play into that for a second. Like, even if you say, I am that I am, what happens in your energy field? It falls flat for me. It does, doesn't it? It just falls flat. It's just like. Huh. So is it a space of the void or is it a space of neutrality? Is it a space of false meaning? Like that's what, that's what creates separation is these false meanings that we put mm -hmm. to everything. Mm -hmm. So for me. <clears throat> It's really started like when this whole thing started coming into my awareness, it's been like, oh, yeah, that's a distortion. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a total distortion. So what I figure, what I find is no matter what path that I choose, there is still some sort of distortion or distorted view um, that keeps me 
in separation and keeps me supporting myself in separation because everything that we have here, we have to put some type of meaning to it. So I realized that this may be very confusing or might feel confusing in the beginning. That's at least what I found when myself was, wait, this is all so confusing. So the confusion comes when we disrupt the meaning behind the beliefs and the mind literally goes into chaos. It goes into a spin. So, but the spin is very useful in the destruction of these belief systems or these meanings that we put behind everything in the world, right? So it's, so really it's, it's the way to destroy the belief right? When the mind goes into confusion or the mind goes into chaos, but we've always seen that whole idea um, as very destructive. Like, you know, the mind goes into a chaotic kind of field where we don't really understand anything. I think that that's honestly the breakdown or how the mind literally breaks itself down in order to create something different because there has to be a destruction component. We can't just you know, even buildings, or if you're going to build something, or if you're going to change the land in some way, somehow you have to destroy something in order for a new creation component to come in. Yeah. So what I say is what I did was actually, I jumped out of the mind and I jumped into my body and I just notice, I just notice things like I don't go into any meaning or judgment I just, I'm just in hyper awareness or super conscious level of awareness. Oh, what is this? Right. I'm not asking much of it. I'm just being in awareness, just noticing that kind of thing. So if we are looking at, you know, all these kinds of things, as we're moving into this new earth component, we really have to start allowing ourselves to move into these almost chaotic kind of states because it is the breaking down of the meaning that's been put behind it from most likely someone else or yourself, if you started to believe into those things, right? But when you move out of the mind and you jump back into your body, what I want you to become aware of is, does it feel truer or is it possible? Or is it an absolute, absolute, no, no, this is, this is, I can't. I can't move into something different here. Or is it, oh my God, I have felt this my whole entire life, but I, but the belief system stated this, right? So that's what you're becoming aware of is, you know, what is it? What is it that's really asked, that's being asked of you? Not necessarily by your, by your ego self or anything like that. It's probably a soul revolution that's happening here well, the let's revolution the, let's hope the soul revolution is happening here. i love the word revolution you know me i know breaking down <clears throat> these old things so yeah i and in listening to you and we come to these conversations not really having I don't really necessarily know what we're going to talk about. So this is really a good one for me to just kind of pull out of, look at and and listen. Um, I'm going to say, when I think about using something like an I am statement, and when I, when I'm looking at that now, I'll say oftentimes, I don't, I don't really say that I am that I am statement, but I've, I've said I am Renee. Mm -hmm. And when I look at that now, that's a way that I have pulled all my, or I'm going to say, my intention has been that that's how I pull all of my aspects together. However, it's presenting as Renee. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, which still keeps me separate, 
Because it creates an I mean, existence I, outside of. Exactly. So it's 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 outside yeah. of that. So now I really get to look at something like like this. I'm just explaining for me how it um how I get to look at this now. <clears throat> Yeah. Is it a statement that I will continue to use potentially when I'm doing something very earthy, I'll say, and I need to be mm-hmm. present in that way? Maybe. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I know. You know, in psychology, but- like, like we teach people to use I am, you know, to keep yourself sure. from placing blame or from placing guilt or shame or something onto someone else, I feel, or I, you know, we, we, we teach people to use I statements. Right. And so it's very ingrained in my consciousness and, and it has everything to do with all of my training. And when I, when this sort of came through, I was like, Oh, it does keep me separate from, um, from whoever, usually we use the I statements in relationships, right? Because mm-hmm. we don't want to place blame, shame, or guilt onto someone else because of the way that I feel about something or the way that I believe about something. Yep. And so, and so, you know, using those are very much tools of self empowerment. Like I said earlier, mm-hmm. right? Like they, <laughs> like we can really use them as empowering types of tools. But what I really want people to be conscious and aware of is in self-actualization, I want you to be aware of how that does really keep you separate from everything and everyone. Because if I'm constantly saying, I feel feel this way, then no one, then I'm not allowing anyone else to feel that way. Not that I want someone to feel my emotions or anything like that. That's, that's crossing the boundaries of empathy. Mm -hmm. Um, But I'm, what I'm saying to myself is I'm creating it myself as an Island. No one else can have this emotion or this feeling because I'm the only one. Cause I just created a separation wall. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Me and everyone else. Right. But what else do we use? You know, like what else, how else can we communicate without projecting out into the world, out into the force. Right. Yeah. So it's really, um, I think we're on a cusp for evolutionizing this whole idea of separation and all of this kind of thing. Um, so what do you, what do you think about that? I think we're on a cusp of some sort of evolutionizing the I. Most definitely. I think there, there is a, a real opportunity present right now for us to make a I'll call it a ginormous shift in in the way we view everything not just mm-hmm. one little component or whatever it's a it's a major shift just even like what you're saying today is it's a major shift yeah in 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 a process i use mm-hmm. so I think that's, I think that's where we are with all pieces as we fully step into this new world. It is new. It's all new. Mm -hmm. So things that we've um, been doing, which keep us separate, probably (laughs) more often than we'd like to admit, are not going to be the way we operate moving forward. Exactly. This whole, so, yeah, the whole, you know, moving into this 13th dimensional frequency, this unit more unified state of being, like we have to start asking ourselves, like, how, what is it that I am playing out here, right? Like, this is a part of self-actualization where I feel like we really need to ask ourselves, like, what is it I truly believe in and does it serve me? Like questioning every single thing, which... I'm constantly saying you need, we just need to be questioning everything Um, because we can't break down these belief systems. We can't create something new if we're never really asking ourselves the question. And I think a key component there is how we operate in day-to-day life, 
when something happens and you're like, what the heck, where'd this come from? Instead of getting all mad and frustrated about it, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. asking the question, oh, hmm. Right. You know, wow, that's interesting. Why did I invite that in? What is this showing me? Instead of, as humans, we tend to go to the the side that's like, this isn't supposed to happen. And then we just kind of let it be. Right. This is a time when we can say, wow, I didn't see that coming. What's mm-hmm. this about? Mm-hmm. What's my, what am I, what, what am I learning from this? How can this be a part of me? Where was it hiding? <laughs> yeah. Why? <laughs> Why well, it was, was it, it was to here? survive. <laughs> It was to survive in a world of separation. (laughs) It's yeah, it it is now a time instead of moving into those old patterns Mm -hmm. of how you respond or relate to something, into being able to just pull yourself out, like you said, and just say, hmm, oh, where'd this come from? Wonder why this is here. Yeah. And that takes work. I don't care what anyone says maybe some of you can just move into that boom but for the most part that for me is something I need to be very conscious of when I'm working on something like that Mm -hmm. and I do see those things pretty quickly now which yay sometimes I see them and ask the question and sometimes I go back to my human me (laughs) yeah yeah I'll do that (laughs) yeah yeah well I think I like this Yeah, I think the other portion of that is we have so much fear about, um, and we have such a negative connotation to when the mind is in chaos, and we don't like being there, honestly. Um, We don't like the breaking down. Well, I don't think we've ever seen it as breaking down the old belief systems, you know, and allowing the mind go into a chaos of question, 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 question. Because I think that that's where the disruption has to come from. And in our, you know, I've always, I've been probably (laughs) known as the disruptor of energy. And it's very intentional on my part. Because I feel like we really need to start seeing these things in a different, whole different light. And not having fear about the mind going into a, a, I don't know, versus I need to know all the time, or I just need to have clarity all the time. But the, I don't know is where that whole disruption of energy within the mind can actually be very, very useful. I think where people have fear and get stuck is that they don't ever come out of the, I don't know, you know, that that they're constantly saying, I just don't know. I just don't know when maybe all we have to do is start asking the right question. Mm Mm-hmm. What is it that I really believe in? <laughs> and does it serve me? And being and when brutally I, honest, I think the other component is being brutally honest with yourself about what you do believe in. One of those, one of the, I'm going to call it a tool because it is a tool for me. When I get stuck in that, I don't know, I don't know. Mm-hmm. A friend of mine told me once upon a time, she said, if you did know, what would it be? Yeah. Ask yourself that question. If you did know, or if you could know, what would you know? Mm -hmm. So when you're saying, I don't know, I don't know. Well, if I could know, if I could know, what does that look like? And that leads me down a whole nother path and oftentimes opens up all kinds of things. Because now I'm not saying, I don't know. I'm saying... If I could. Well, so before I get to that question, I have to actually ask myself, what is it that I don't really know? Oh, sure. Because if I'm saying, well, I don't know, then what is it that I don't know? I mean, do I have a concreteness that says, oh, I don't actually know what compartmentalization of the I am that I am is? No, it's very clear to me. (laughs) <laughs> right if you ask yourself mm-hmm. that when mm-hmm. you're in that sort of chaotic space what I do is 
is I say, okay, well, what is it that I, that I know for sure that I don't know? There's never an answer to that. Mm-hmm. So then I can start to ask, well, what is it that I do know? Mm-hmm. Because what, what happens to the mind when, if you ask, if you use that sort of route, it's, there's a definitive, oh, I guess I, I guess there's really nothing in here that I don't know for sure that I don't know. Mm-hmm. Then the mind could start to go into a spiral of an upward thinking versus always, well, I don't know. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. <laughs> it's a reversal. It's a, it's a mind yes. trick. It's literally Mm -hmm. a a mind trick to make it go someplace else. Yeah. Science, here's some good news. Science is actually on board with the whole creation components now because they just had a new universal law that they actually stated, actually stated, they made a statement about it. It's called the universal law of increasing functional information wow and they actually stated that it's a new universal law of evolution and the fact that everything is always ascending hallelujah (laughs) yes we are progressing i mean this is evidence that actually we are progressing so very much I know new information um, to new awarenesses creates new meanings all the time. So we don't actually have to be stuck in these old belief systems or old paradigms or anything like that. And the practice, this is the actual practice of self actualization is that there is always an increasing evolution in the universe and beyond this universe (laughs) and in you and your belief systems need to reflect it or you just end up stuck in that I don't know kind of energy field Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so literally with the creation of this new law it creates a paradigm shift allowing for this 13th dimensional frequency of unity non-separation harmony in nature and in the natural universe. So literally, not only is this just a concept or an idea, but now science is saying, um, yeah, we do have this new new law, this new universal law, and it does state about evolution. So I'm super yeah. excited. That's really profound. I know, right? <laughs> Wow. Like this, this is a tra- this is a projection into like such a quick, such a quick evolutionary period. I mean, that's the way I feel about it. When I was like reading this, I was like, "Oh, oh my gosh, we are here!" <laughs> and now we have some sort of backing. It's not just an etheric idea or an etheric concept, right? right? Now, actually, science is saying, "Oh, yes." there is something here. So I think it's more believable. I think people will be able to sort of wrap their minds around it a little more because we are, especially in the Western world where we do believe in compartmentalization, right? And we do put all of our um, belief systems behind science and, you know, the, the proof of everything. Well, now science is saying, look, there is some proof here of something else. I'm just going to say excellent. I know, right? Excellent. Excellent. I know. know. If science and spirituality is creating a unified field, because this is really what they're saying, right? Mm -hmm. Can you imagine the creation components that are going to start to come through now? Because we just opened up doors of paradigms that we've never explored before. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Like, yeah, here we are. Just, it, it's just like, <laughs> woo. you know, when you wait for something for a while and, I and know. then it's real. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. It makes me want to cry because it's oh, so exciting. Wow. I know. Yes. It really is. 
and is. and just what you're giving us today as well gives us another whole another whole piece of our being that we get to look at and again that's compartmentalizing i know but I don't want to be there. So it get it's, I don't know. I, I don't have the right words. I'm going to say it that way. Um, but it's like, I, I just feel like there's this whole, something big's opened up for me. Does that make sense? Something big's mm-hmm. opened up. I get to jump in and look at it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I can choose to embrace it. I can choose to say, Oh, not yet. I can choose to, I, I get to choose how I look at it. Um, and I'm excited to dive into this. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I know I really am because it's I know. yeah. I know oh, this I is, get goosebumps. This is the revolution. <laughs> like, like this is the evidence of the revolution. I mean, this is the evidence that I think that we have been waiting for for such a long time, and now, like, the doorway literally swung open. It might have been open a crack before, but now it's like wide open. Right? Like with this is oh yeah. This is the shift in consciousness that we are here for. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I was so excited. <laughs> I'm still so excited. <laughs> uh-huh. Why am I hearing the word responsibility, Angela? Can you tell me? Responsibility? Well, you know, that's one of the seven powers of the soul is being responsible for our shifting consciousness. Yeah. But how that, how we play that out is, um, is really, I don't know. It's just like, it's here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have to look at, look at that too. At the same time, we're not responsible for the shift. (laughs) No, I'm not. I I I know it's not that, but it's like, um, yeah. Yeah. So, well, I think we're just going to leave it there and let you all just sort of play with it and energetically maybe move into it. And um, I'm excited for that. I know. Me too. Well, thanks everyone for joining us today on the blueprint. Mm -hmm. Um, If you have questions, need help, like that confusing mind is just uh, exhausting reach out we have programs available for you (laughs) sounds great (laughs) thank you for being with us today to find out more about angela visit her website at www.angelablaha.com